Greetings ladies and gentlemen, my name is Xana520 and welcome back to Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. Last episode we came here to the pirate base in Aegon Waste. We found out where they were hiding. And in this episode we are going to see what is up ahead. So, not much has... Oh yeah, the, the, the sand room. Okay, so there's two turrets here. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Uh, there's an item in this room that we can't get at the moment because it involves this big old pile of sand. But, looking around, we can see that this is damaged. I believe Brinstone is also bombs? No, Brinstone is missiles. Gotcha. Okay. However, coming up here, we can see our nemesis down there. Structural analysis complete. This is a standard Kellium energy reactor. Converted by the space parts, the process phase on energy. Shielding levels at 220% and holding. There's another one of these little cubbies here. There's a black door there that we can't access. This window's broken, so... Once again... This creature is drawing energy from the Phazon, causing it to shrink away. And when she's done, she notices us. Standoff. This will be our first encounter with Dark Samus. Phazon powered entity. Powerful distance attacks. Phazon energy shield repels all weapons. Wait until it is down to attack. Avoid close contact with target. Dark Samus has a few abilities. She has this spread shot, a phase on. She can do that to avoid our missiles. She can fire her own missiles. And all of her attacks are phase on powered. I believe she has the ability to turn into a ball later. She has her own morph ball. Um. But she also has the annoying ability to sidestep our, um, our lock. The only way you're going to hit her with a missile is if you, like, um, hit her while she's performing an attack. And even then... Actually, come to think of it, I don't think you can... I think you can... You get one missile. You get one missile shot off on her. And that's it. She'll also do that... She'll do her shield thing as a means to attack. Where is she? She also has the, one of the coolest themes in the game. Whoa. Okay. Ow. What? But this is essentially just a pea shooter battle. I think she has a second phase where she starts doing uh, ball attacks. Yeah, excuse me. I'm just sort of jamming out to this theme at the moment. Oh my god. Oh gosh. Oh, I got her. I got her with a missile. Uh. I swear she has another attack. Maybe she only uses it once she gets to half health. But she's very, very near to. What? Oh, there you are. Oh, here we go. She charges up her phase on. And now she has a more powerful attack. 
Um, let's see if I can get her to use it. There it is. She does that, and then, like, dive bombs you, and then she's stuck for a while. I'm out of missiles now. I keep getting stuck on crap. It's kind of annoying. Oh, oh and then she charges up a super missile. That's the other thing she can do. Um, I'm, I'm now uh, realizing that my voice is really scratchy at the moment because I just woke up. Fire your super missile. Uh, those, uh, oh, those canister, those flames that she leaves behind from destroying the canisters, they are dam they do damage you. Stop! It's really hard to do anything with her to, like, dodge her attacks or whatever. Because you can't dodge unless you're locked onto an enemy. And she jumps out of lock. Okay, now she's just sort of spamming this attack. Come on. Okay, there we go. Currently, all we have right now are our missiles and our... Uh... Charge beam, really. Our power beam. She keeps getting in my face, though. That's kind of annoying. Also, if she hits the wall, she immediately bounces back. Charge shots are the way to go with this. Gotcha. We earn a purple credit. But the fight has destabilized Dark Samus. And she explodes. Releasing a powerful blast of Phazon. And dispersing into the air. I believe the fires have now gone out, and we can now access this elevator over here. There's also spider ball tracks that we can't scan at the moment. Also, in this room, these... This is the only way to get the scan for Phazon. Volatile ore with biomutagenic properties. Origin point of phase on unknown. First detection of element on planet Talon 4. Used by space pirates to produce vast levels of energy. You can see the remnants of good old Dark Samus here. There's no scans, other scans in this room. Also, it is important that you scan Dark Samus in this fight because... I don't. F I feel like we're not. This is not the end of our sights with her, but this is the only time to get this one scan. Because if I go to creatures, I think it's off world. Yes, Dark Samus one. Each of her forms has its own scan. Every time we face her, it'll be different. But coming into this little side room. We can grab some lore here. 69898. Shadow War. Grab some missiles. And we can grab our first weapon. The Dark Beam. The Dark Beam is this game's replacement for the Ice Beam. It has similar functionality to it. And it is on the same spot. Oh, and we can now buy storyboard package from the uh, extras menu. So, to activate the uh, dark beam, we hold plus and point to the left, the same way we activated the ice beam. The dark beam is a Luminoth weapon. With it, we can activate these black doors finally. We can also use these crystal doors. However, those with eagle eyes will notice that there is a 
meter on the right hand side of my screen now below the missiles. That is because all the extra weapons use ammo. Lock 70136, Federation attack. The Dark Beam has its own ammo pool, similar to the weapons from Metroid Prime Hunters. I believe there's a new enemy that shows up in this room. Yes, you. This is our first instance of the Pirate Grenadier. Thanks for specializing in grenade combat. Powerful grenade launcher makes his enemy dangerous at range. Minimal close combat ability. He... Whoa, okay. He can also apparently sidestep us. But he's no more dangerous than a regular pirate. He just has a more powerful weapon. Apparently it was bargain day at the weapons shop, but you couldn't get any extra armor. Wow, my voice is scratchy. Hang on a minute. Let me get a drink. <clears throat> See if that helps any. Still in my waking up voice. Anyway. This is the portal that the space pirates went through earlier and you can see the blue outline these are similar to the other portals that we witnessed um, where we had to scan a little device to activate them those will appear later but there are these mini portals all over the place they're basically just subspace rifts to activate the dark portal you shoot it with the dark beam Now we return to Dark Aether. And we find immediately that the space pirates didn't make it. Subject's spine was shattered after high velocity impact. The attack crippled the subject, leaving it vulnerable to further attacks and ultimately termination. Bioscan complete. Subject took multiple armor breaches, exposing his body to local atmosphere. Resulting trauma led to multiple organ failure and death. Up there, you can see another one of our dark Aegon keys that we're going to need, as well as a new enemy. The Dark Preed. Darkling possessed gas filled cyborg. Darkling enhances target's durability. Destruction of outer body will result or release a high, highly toxic cloud. Uh, these are the puffers of this game. We've got that over there. We've got this guy. One of these... Oh, oh, we've got an ing in here. There is an ing. About. Um, so over here... Not that. That. Is a nullified crystal. Nullified crystal protective field of light energy deactivated. Light crystals, when covered with dark energy, cease to function for a brief time. Light energy can clear the crystal of the dark energy. Alternatively, you can just shoot it a bit to clear the dark energy. There is one other scan that you will have to make. Also this. This is a statue conceals a Luminoth device. Outer shell of the statue is composed of brimstone. So we missile it. And there is a light lift crystal within. Energized by dark based weapons, Luminoth lift platform will lower when crystal is energized by dark weaponry. So we just shoot this. And this entire structure will lower so we can get on top of it. Also, shooting one of these with dark with the dark beam will result in a nullified beacon. These are usually the only way you're going to get these, or that's usually the way, only way you're going to get these, because this doesn't usually happen unless extraordinary circumstances. Basically, it's just the light, the, the light crystal, but nullified as well. And with that, we have 40% of logbook scans. 
Oh, there's another pirate over here. Subject appears to have been terminated by his own forces. Evidence of parasitic infestation present. Subject may have turned on his allies against his will. Oh, okay, I guess you can scan these puddles of Faison as well. But we now have to make our way around this area. Now, remember when I said these blade pods would become important? They are important because they're probably going to be the main way you get ammo back. And I will explain the ammo mechanic more whenever we get to our next enemy, or our next item. Go away! Nobody likes you, Ing. Let me just, uh... blow that up. Instantly kill him. But you can see he was charging up an attack there. That was the attack I mentioned in the last episode that they have. The Ing have an attack that if you're standing not in one of these beacon areas, what they can actually do is charge into you and attempt to possess you. Now your battle armor prevents it from happening, but the other thing is, is it does a whole lot of damage to you. There's nothing we can do here yet. Um, coming over here, we find this beacon area here. Bioscan complete. Subject's chest armor was compromised by multiple high-energy strikes, then penetrated by a piercing weapon, terminating subject's life signs. We have a light version of that rift that we saw in the Dark World. It seems these pirates were trying to get out the, their Phazon canisters. However, there's nothing we can do with this at the moment, but we will be coming back here. Right now, we just need to get further in here. This is that sand room from earlier. Instead, it's occupied by a pillar. Jump around the back here and look at the top, and there is a crystal at the very top that we can shoot with dark energy to bring it down. Which lets us get up here to a missile door. And reveal a save station. This is the save station from earlier that we started at. Subject chest armor was compromised by multiple high energy strikes, then penetrated by a piercing weapon, terminate oh yeah, we already read that. Guess it was the same. Subject has a number of severe Phazon radiation burns. Trauma from these wounds is the cause of death. Phazon is not a toy. My cable was twisted. I'll do a quick save here. And head through this tunnel. Uh, so this tunnel is a little more tricky, especially in, uh, the GameCube version, because you have to bomb jump over that, you can't just flick your Wiimote. More Phazon. You'll notice that the Phazon seems to be only centralized here on Dark Aether. And that is because the meteor that struck... Aether and created the split was the same sort of meteor that struck Talon 4. However, because of Aether's unstable nature, all the Phazon ended up here. Here's another Space Pirate. The subject has numerous fatal wounds in the back, all from space pirate weaponry. Such termination is often the punishment for cowardice among space pirate commandos. Now we've got these um, platforms here. We're going to need to deactivate three locks in this room in order to remove the beams on this door, which appear to be space pirate in origin. We've got another dead space pirate here. Sector was caught in a phazon explosion. The force of the explosion breached its armor, leaving it exposed to phazon radiation and the toxic atmosphere of Dark Aether. It didn't live long after that. Yeah. Um. A bit of a double whammy there. Phazon and then. You know, this.
corrosive garbage. The second one is up here. I don't know why they decided to make this cutscene. Um, but the last one is over here, behind these space pirate crates that I will promptly destroy so I can access the uh, beacon here behind it. This, These things actually have another scan, I believe. But it's from when you scan it from the wrong side. And I think it's specific to the one that's up top. Bruh. Uh, let's get rid of this phase on because I don't want to have this around. Uh, I probably should take the long way around the room anyway. Let's get the bubble here. Blow these blade pods up. Anyway, um, so we're actually coming up on our next item here in a sec, I believe. I don't know if there's a boss that I have to fight for it. Oop. Okay, so there's two enemies in this area. First one is this, the Ing Claw, toxin spewing a mobile darkling. Tar target surrounded by impenetrable shell produces deadly vapor. Those enemies cannot be defeated. Just as a note. And activating this crystal over here should enable the enemies that are shoot. Oh no. Should enable the enemies that are shoot. There they are. Oh my gosh, stop. Let me up. Yeah, they're stuck to the outside of this bubble. Oh, they're just Lumites. I thought they were Dark Lumites or something. Whatever, let's get out of here. This place is not a happy place. And here's the other side of the... Um, or here's the dark version of the pirate base cave where they have that structure. Where they have the Darkling inside with the Metroids. This room is infested with Night Barbs, which I've already scanned. Hopping down here, there is a light door and a dark door. The light door is the way out of the room. However, we don't have anything to open that with yet. So what we have to do is we have to come over here bring this down and then come over here and bring this down. I'm going to suck up those missiles because I kind of need them. I also want to get rid of these night barbs so they don't mess with my jumping. Up over here. There's a whole bunch of goodies right there. Get rid of these night barbs. Get those goodies. Hop up here. And in this room, I said in this room, we are going to find the counterpart. We're also going to find this Luminoth here. Subject Luminoth has been dead for 1.2 decacycles. Target shows signs of phase on radiation poisoning and extreme exposure to dark Aether's atmosphere. All gear and weapons have been removed from the target. But this is the counterpart to the dark beam, the light beam. That was an incredibly quick weapon upgrade. The light beam, oh, and we can now get the sketch patch it package unlocked for or we have the sketch package unlocked for purpose purchase yeah and you can see the light beam also has its own ammo pool that's to the right it takes up the wave beam configuration and now the game will explain the mechanic of ammo restoration these blade pods 
Now, let me get to a less hazardous room. Oh, and these guys, these are actually a scan, unlike the other ones from the light world. This is a webling. Darkling capable of generating an energizing tensile biomaterial. Creatures immobile and immune to most weapons, the light beam will be able to disrupt and destroy the target. So we just shoot him in the eye. Shoot him in the eye. So, anyway, to explain the light beam. Shooting and killing an enemy with the light beam will cause dark beam ammo to drop. Shooting and killing an enemy with the dark beam usually, I will say, will cause light ammo to drop. Also, I'll show this off now. Shooting this with the light beam will energize the crystal. And gen generate enhanced field of light energy. Energized crystals provide better protection from dark anethers denizens. Dark creatures are damaged by the energized field. The same can happen with the beacons. And to demonstrate, we have a uh, Darkling over here. Shooting that will instantly kill the Darkling. However, one of the downsides of this is that unless the enemy is in the field, they typically will not come near the... Uh, The, uh... They won't come near the field if they know it's energized. Also of note... Let me pick up the dark key and I'll explain this. The dark beam is used to energize dark portals. The light beam is used to energize light portals. We got another silver credit here. Let's, let's head out this door real quick. Uh... The, um, the beam, despite having ammo, will not go away completely. You can actually charge up an attack. I don't think we're supposed to be in here yet. Yeah, this is not, not till later. Because we need the, 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 the missile... Or, actually, you know what? That's right, this is where the last key is. We do have to come this way. However, as we approach the key, an Ing warrior steals it, and the door is sealed behind us. Also of note, this bubble in the middle doesn't have a crystal or a beacon to energize. Um, but anyway, as I was saying, the, uh, the field, will, or the, the weapon, you can charge up a charge shot to fire a regular shot of a, uh, either of the weapons. That's so you don't get stuck in the light or dark world without ammo. And also so you can obviously get ammo back. Anyway, uh, this guy, the Ing Web Trap, I believe this is the, one of the only times that you can scan that enemy. As you'll note, the the light beam has a sort of shotgun effect to it. Oh, that's the other attack these guys have. I forgot about that. I'll show off the charge shot for the dark beam whenever it becomes uh, relevant. Okay, so the light beam is now depleted. I can still shoot a regular shot with the light beam by charging it up. As you'll see, it doesn't do the, the the charged thing anymore. Ow. I want to get some light in. That's not what I wanted. However, you can do that. That's that's a trick. Oh, and I got some light in my back. Cool. Nice. <laughs> um... And that was the last one. 
So killing all of those guys lets the key come back and it removes the web trap and spawns you back in the center. We're coming up on time here, so I need to hurry up. We found all the Aegon keys, so we can now access the Dark Temple. Whenever you see that, that's really good because that's a lot of ammo. Also, when you're really low on ammo, you tend to get more ammo. Ah, yes. The Darkling Tentacles. These are basically reskins of the, um... The, uh... Whatever they're called from... The first game. Um... The, uh... The, the, what are they called? I forget what they're called. The, the... Things that, like, whip at you out of the walls. Reaper vines, that's what they were called. Anyway, let's come up here. Let's get some more light ammo back. Also, you'll notice that ammunition automatically tracks to you. Unlike the other items. So you don't have to go through so much of a trouble to, um, you know, get them back. Uh, one other thing you'll note back there is that the, uh... What is it called? The, uh... The, uh... The Phazon containers didn't respawn. The Phazon containers are finite in this game. Um, also over here... This is an ammo station. These are normally referred to as missile stations in older games, but... Because we have ammo here... Ammo now refers to missiles and dark and light ammo. There's only a few of these scattered around the game, but there's definitely more of these than there were missile stations in the first game. But, with the light beam, we can now escape Dark Aether, because we can activate this portal. My voice has slowly gotten less crusty over time. I don't know if the water actually helped or not. But now we're here. Back in the main reactor. So let's hurry up and get to that save room. Uh, also the turret's back. Let's deal with them. Uh, hop up here, and go back to the save room. So, next time on Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, we will take our light beam and our dark beam, and head back to the temple to try and claim the light of Aether from the Dark Aegon Temple. Nanofy20 signing out.